Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Dolores Tarver. I'm a licensed psychologist here in Georgia, coming to you with your next mental health moment. And today we will be discussing hitting that second wall. So it is without a doubt, one of the most difficult times that we have probably experienced in our lives and also as a country in terms of coronavirus, but also in terms of the civil unrest that is happening in our country as we still have not brought Breonna Taylor's killers to any kind of justice. We are still experiencing countless examples of people being mistreated simply because of their ethnicity or the color of their skin. And so we are really struggling as a country and a lot of us may be not realizing that we are dealing with increased depressive symptoms or anxiety symptoms and we're just feeling off maybe, not quite in balance, concerned, finding ourselves on edge, maybe we're not sleeping as well, but haven't really connected it to the fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic and also dealing with difficulty in our country in terms of how we're treating people who should be respected. So here are some things that I wanna to talk to you all about in terms of how to address some of those things. Because what we're realizing is that we're having some long-term effects, uh, trauma from seeing all the negative images of, of people being killed, um, seeing negative images of people not being brought to justice, seeing images of uh, children in schools and them not having precautions in place, our educators not having precautions in place and the numbers of COVID going up, right? So we need to kind of think about what is my plan going to be for managing the distress that I may be experiencing related to um, social injustice as well as this pandemic. Well, first things first, I think it's really important that we maintain some level of optimism. Hope is really important when you're dealing with difficult situations. So I need to be able to believe that it's possible that we're going to resolve these challenges that we're experiencing, that we're going to be able to have some justice for Breonna Taylor, that we're going to be able to get to a point where our police officers are not simply killing people because of the color of their skin or, or perceptions about their race. We are going to get to the point where we're able to manage this pandemic in a way that we don't have to think about it when we go out, um, when we go to work, when our kids go to school, but that we're able to get to um, back to this place of life where we are able to matriculate through and get things done without these things being the center focus, right? So visualizing that it is possible for us to be able to manage this pandemic, we have some hope on the horizon because we're only six months in and that seems like a long time because it is, but what that means in scientific terms is we haven't had enough time to collect longitudinal data. So we need some time to get those long-term studies in about how our bodies respond to this virus, what things, other things we can do to be preventative, and hopefully a vaccine that may be able to help people manage the symptoms. So those things are coming. Uh, and once we get that additional information, we'll be able to govern ourselves in a way to keep ourselves safe, right? The other thing is we have a lot of people who have become active during this time and even before this time who are really working on the social justice piece. They are trying to figure out usable solutions to be able to manage um, police brutality, uh, racial injustices, discrimination, um, not having things in place to protect people from officers bursting in their homes in the middle of the night, these no-knock warrants, right? Like people are actively working on it. You are those people. You are actively doing things. Every time you post information about something that occurred or you sign a petition or you donate money to a cause um, or you provide education to your family about race, right? Have these conversations. You are doing something about that. So the hope is in that we are moving in the direction of getting to a place where this is not stuff that we're just sweeping under the rug, but we're actually coming up with strategic plans. And, and that's because of you, right? So um, that optimism and hope there, visualizing a time when we are able to be connected to each other simply because we're human beings um, and treat each other with kindness and respect and that our kids will be able to be safe and our parents and our grandparents will be able to be safe when they go to the store, when they go to school, um, we'll be able to spend that time with our friends and not have to be concerned about whether or not we're gonna be sick. Like that time is coming. And so we have to keep that in place 
even though I know the deadlines for that have changed. We thought it was summer, which is why we're hitting this second wall um, right now. Cause we're like, we thought, it, we thought it would be over by now. Heat was supposed to kill this thing, right? And then we learn like, uh, no, actually that's not how that works. But that does not mean that hope is not there and that um, we're not coming up with other so solutions. As you all know, when you're problem solving, you come up with a lot of different options. You only need one that works. So even if 10 are tried and nine fail, uh, that last one working gives us hope that it's possible. Um, what else do we need to do, right? Self-care during this time is super important. Uh, I can't highlight enough how just 30 minutes a day of exercise, you can walk um, three times a day, 10 minutes in your living room if you're uncomfortable going outside or, or, or physically unable to. Um, you can do exercises in a chair. You can... Um, work your core, like you can do yoga. There are a lot of things that you can do, but that helps us with our stress. And when we decrease our stress, we're much more likely to be able to sleep better, uh, have better digestion, and also be able to concentrate and attend better. So when we need to problem solve, we have the faculties to do so. It also helps with our memory, um, our attention and our concentration. So that exercise is important, not only for us, but also for our kids. Um, they're gonna be home, probably most of them, um, because a lot of the schools are backtracking with, they're just going to be doing the um, cyber learning. So because that is in place, we know our kids are bored and they are ready to get out of the house and we are probably a little frustrated with them. So thinking about other things that we can do, if the stuff that we've been doing, uh, we've done that so much, the kids aren't as interested, uh, get on Pinterest, get on some of these blogs for moms, get on some of these groups for parents to talk about other possible things you can do. You can be creative. Kids can help with home improvement projects. Kids can help with um, you doing, especially the, the, the landscaping around the home. And I know a lot of them are like, I don't wanna go outside, it's too hot. Um, but it's great for them actually to get that vitamin D. And so those are opportunities, them doing crafts, building things themselves, little small things. Um, I know Home Depot and Lowe's have been working a lot to try to find little projects that kids can do, plant gardens, um, flowers, then that way they can watch them grow. Butterfly Gardens has gotten really popular again. Um, arts and crafts activities. Uh, you can set up a makeshift basketball goal outside if you don't already have one. Um, get you a Nerf ball and you and the kids can play a little ball. You can set up obstacle courses for them to run through to get their exercise, just to give them a break during the day and get them outside. But also relying on some of our technology so they can see their friends um, and being able to connect with them through Zoom or other technology can be helpful during this time. For you as well, you may need to think about, okay, what strategies may I need to change because I'm finding I'm not as productive, I'm procrastinating more, I'm sleeping later. Um, so what kind of structure can I put in place for myself? Everybody needs something to get excited about, something that gives us meaning and purpose. And if you're feeling like, I don't really like what my job is doing, I don't wanna um, work from home, I don't like this, find some other things that you can do that give you meaning and purpose during the day. And again, this goes back to thinking about what you need and that may have changed. Six months ago, you might've wanted to do different things, but now you may be more inspired to do something else. And here's a good opportunity for you to reevaluate. What are some things that I would like to do for me? And again, Google, what are some things that give people purpose? Um, Google, what are some um, things that people are doing to help manage the pandemic? And, and a lot of suggestions will come up. I am a very big proponent of this is a good time to focus on a project for you that maybe you have wanted to do or put on hold that you stopped. Uh, maybe you used to paint and you stopped doing that or used to draw and stopped doing that. Maybe you were um, a dancer and stopped, but you can have your instructor via Zoom and still dance. Maybe you were a person that liked to read, but you're not reading as much now because you're not motivated when you can get the books um, via audio or you may listen to podcasts. You may create your own podcast during this time. You may be the person that helps other people manage a budget, come up with things that allow them to catch sales, find places where people can get cheap clothes. Don't underestimate your talents. Everybody has some. And I encourage you to write yours down. Write down what are you good at? Give yourself a strength-based assessment, a skill assessment, if you will, and think about like, what are my talents? And that may help guide you in what you can be doing during this time to get over this second wall. 
Um, speaking of second walls, I know financially, some people are still very much struggling, struggling during this time with underemployment or unemployment. Uh, there's a lot of layoffs that are occurring. We thought that when we opened up the um, cities and states that people would get back to business, but that hasn't happened because we haven't gotten the pandemic under control. So you may be having to think about getting second jobs, finding jobs where you can work from home, finding opportunities um, to be able to earn a little extra cash. And there are some creative ways that you can do that. If you are going back to that strength-based assess assessment, someone who is good with education, you may be able to create an environment where you have some learners, you manage some learners um, yourself and be able to help them. That could be a way to um, earn income. People are going to need daycare providers or places for their kids to go because they still have to work. If you're um, unemployed right now and you're able to have some space for kids and you all are able to kind of work out making sure they're not interacting outside of uh, that environment in their home and uh, that they've been tested for COVID and you can create a safe and secure environment, you may be able to have um, kind of a daycare, if you will, for, for kids at your home. So that could be an option to earn additional income. Uh, the stores are definitely still open in terms of your grocery stores. Your retail stores uh, may not necessarily be the best option, but your grocery stores may be an option. Those stock jobs in the middle of the night or early in the morning may be an option to pick up some extra income during this time. Um, less people in the store, you're able to wear your mask, keep yourself safe, um, and it may not interfere with someone else's hours if they're working during the day. So looking at that financial plan is really important during this time. Do we need to cut back on things? Um, you know, hopefully you're not having to spend a lot of money on school clothes and school supplies this year if your kids are learning virtually. So that's a way to save a little income. But then think about are there things in your home that you don't use that you may be able to take to a consignment shop uh, and sell and get additional money. There are all kinds of things in our homes that we don't use. We have excessive amounts sometimes of perfume or cologne, shoes and clothes, um, furniture, instruments that our kids no longer use. These are things that um, are, while they are creating uh, dust in our homes, may be opportunities to earn some additional money and clear out your space because clutter can make a, a space feel more claustrophobic. And if you're spending more time at home, the more open your space is, the better that can feel. And so those may be some opportunity, jewelry, uh, um, those may be some opportunities to be able to earn some additional income. But also thinking strategically about um, how we're going to be able to move forward in the event that November, December, January, things shut down again due to the pandemic, cold and flu season, right? This is what we were concerned about before. Uh, so I need to be thinking ahead too. So in case we our hours were cut or we lose employment, what can we do to put some things in place for them? Um, we know that our social support services are, are tapped. Um, we are very much concerned about even unemployment checks and how that's going to work out. So you want to be looking at those options, but you also may have to think about other additional options for financial support as well. Um, are there things that you don't have to pay right now um, that can be moved to a later point? Setting those things up now, uh, thinking about that, how you can cut down, uh, what are the, the guidelines around your mortgage, your rent, um, making sure that you understand uh, your particular situation and everyone's situation is different. Our insurance is those kind of things that we have to pay. This is a good time to be asking some questions about that. Um, the other thing that I think is important for us to consider is that we may need to live together in a space. So thinking about um, if my lease is up or uh, I'm in a position where I can move, maybe I can downsize to a different place. Um, in preparation for being able to have less expenses, I mean, less income coming in, so I need to have less expenses. Can I share uh, with someone else in terms of someone else move in and they pay um, some of the fees? So this communal living may actually be a popular option for this time. You get support with the kids, support with the financial resources, so that may um, potentially be an option. This is also, I think, a good time for us to really think about um, taking a fast from negativity, like what am I watching? What am I hearing? What am I seeing? What am I engaging in that might be negative and contributing to more feelings of depression or anxiety 
um, and further exacerbating potential trauma. So do I need to take breaks from the news? Do I? It, uh, it doesn't matter how frequently you watch the news. The information is relatively the same. Like you're going to get pandemic information. You're going to get information about um, what's going on in our country, um, areas of deficit for us. So even if you watch it every few days, like you're not going to be that behind. Or do you want to have someone... Um, filter through and just give you the important information or you go to some websites and get highlights of information so you can be mindful about what you take in. Um, be careful about negative people in your space right now. Um, those people who are kind of maybe doom and gloom right now or who are um, a little hopeless right now may not necessarily be what you want to be around all the time. You might want to utilize more positive people in your support system, encouraging people. This is a good time to be checking on people that have got a good word for you or have other things to talk about other than um, negative things because we don't want to um, just drown ourselves in negative information that's going to affect our mood uh, as well as our motivation to be able to do things. Uh, so think about positive podcasts, positive websites, positive YouTube um, videos, positive things that you can turn on to so that every day you're getting some positive information and not just simply negative information coming in. Um, I think it's also important that we stay connected during this time. And so you may have kind of gotten a little bit lax on connecting with people. Maybe time to, again, generate that list of folks that I want to check on. We want to definitely make sure we're checking on our vulnerable people, our people who uh, are easy to get forgotten during this time. Um, the older people maybe in your congregations or in your families um, or in your neighborhoods, checking on them. And again, this is a good way to do something, um, an act of kindness that can kind of help boost that mood too. Uh, can I drop off something for them, a little, um, a little note or pick some flowers out of the garden for them or stop by, talk to them from the sidewalk um, wave at them. Those kind of things can, can make us feel good. Those are also things that we can do with the kiddos. Um, and then social justice pro uh, projects are good to do right now too. Um, sitting down with your kids and, and talking to them about how they can um, learn to write letters or learn to speak up on their social media, um, who their um, city officials are, who their state officials are that they can contact when they want to share um, some of their concerns, giving them a voice. This is a good time for you all as a family maybe to even come up with what do we want to be our, our social justice platform over the course of this year and next year. How do we want to contribute to making this world that we live in a better place? And we can start in our neighborhood. We can start in our city. We can start our, in our state. There's um, no shortages of ways that you can become more active and have a voice um, and advocate for the, the equal treatment and the respectful treatment of everyone. Uh, so there, there are a lot of ways that I think that you can recreate plans for yourself or uh, make some adjustments as needed so that you can meet this, this wall and be able to um, address it and get past it. And sometimes it's just important that we have other people talking to us so we get other ideas. You may talk to someone else about that you're like, yeah, I feel like I'm at this wall. They may say something to you that's really helpful to you. Like, oh yeah, that's a good strategy. I didn't even think about that. So this is a time for us not to feel like we can't express how we're feeling with other people, um, but that we're more open with people so that we can have that support and not feel like we're in this by ourselves. Okay, uh, remember to take care of you. Remember that this is temporary. And remember that you have the skills to handle any problem that you face as long as you write it out, create a plan, and utilize your resources. Okay, be encouraged.